بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يطيب لي أن أرحب بالمشاهدين الكرام عبر قناة وزارة الثقافة في هذا اللقاء العلمي الذي فيه تبدأ على بركة الله بأول محاضرة من سلسلة المحاضرات واللقاءات العلمية في مجال الأبحاث والدراسات الأثرية في المملكة العربية السعودية والتي تنظمها هيئة التراث تشمل عدة محاور مثل التراث المغموم في مياه البحر الأحمر والخليج العربي، الفنون الصخرية والنقوش العربية القديمة والإسلامية، التنقيبات الأثرية في عدد من المواقع الأثرية ونتائج الأعمال السعودية الدولية المشتركة. افتتح اللقاء بكلمة قدمها سعد الدكتور جاسم بن سليمان الحبش الرئيس التنفيذي لهيئة التراث فليتفضل مشكورا. شكرا دكتور، السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. حياكم الله جميعا سعيد تواجدنا هذه الليله وان شاء الله بدايه بدايه مباركه بدايه ثريه لبرنامج جديد اطلقته هيئه التراث في سلسله المحاضرات العلميه نرى انه من واجبنا نحن في هيئه التراث من ضمن مهامنا المتعدده هي نشر نشر الثقافه التراث الثقافي بقطاعات الاربعه التي تشرف عليها الهيئه الاثار التراث العمراني الحرق الصناعات اليدويه والتراث الثقافي غير المادي و نرى ان هذه فرصه كبيره باذن الله ان ان نشارك مع المجتمع مع المختصين مع المهتمين على مستوى العالم الحمد لله احنا نستخدم منصه الان ممكن الوصول لها من اي مكان بالعالم ان نشاركهم عدد عدد كبير من قصص النجاح وايضا معلومات تستحق ان تشارك معلومات علميه تقدم بطريقه ليست يعني علميه معقده لكن بطريقه بسيطه يقدمها علماء من 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 المملكه من خارج المملكه واليوم الحمد لله يعني شاركنا الدكتوره كارا من من ايطاليا في 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 موضوع حقيقه مشوق وله له كثير من الجمهور سواء من المتخصصين او غير المتخصصين وايضا هو ياتي تزامنا مع نقله نوعيه في عملنا في هيئه التراث عندما اعلنت المملكه من خلال سمو وزير الثقافه رئيس رئيس مجلس اداره هيئه التراث في اجتماعات المصاحبة لقمة العشرين التي عقدت المملكة أعلنت عن إنشاء مركز دولي للتراث الثقافي المغمور والحمد لله بدأنا في المشروع بدأنا نستقطب الخبراء والكفاءات ونسق مع الجامعات السعودية ذات العلاقة واليوم حنا المحاضرة هذه تكون إن شاء الله أحد أحد الروافد اللي تعطي بعض المعلومات أنا سعيد بتواجد الدكتورة وأستأذنكم نرحب بها باللغة الإنجليزية وبعدين عادنا نتركه مجال الدكتور So uh, Doctor, uh, welcome to to uh, to this venue, and really we are we appreciate your your participation. And as I said in the brief in Arabic, that I, I really uh, delighted to, to have you and uh, to, uh, many many scholars uh, around the world who are, work with us in archaeology, in built heritage, in handcraft, in, in the world heritage, in, in tangible cultural heritage. And we we think that this is the right time. not only to work together with these top scholars, either Saudi Arabia or worldwide, but also to share the knowledge. We think it is not enough to publish scientific paper, which is a great thing to achieve. And this is a great mandate for, for both sides, but also it is a mandate of us to deliver this information and to, to show it to everyone who is participating, either Saudi citizens or, or interested people in this kingdom or, or in Saudi Arabia. and in, in, uh, uh, worldwide to, to discover these this, uh, uncovered, untapped uh, parts of the Saudi cultural heritage. And as I mentioned, that we're lucky to have you and the team uh, many times in the underwater heritage uh, uh, program. And we now we have this new era of, of, uh, of uh, dealing with cultural heritage when we have the Heritage Commission founded. And Alhamdulillah, now we are starting major projects and among them is the underwater heritage. Uh, now I will leave the floor to, to, to Dr. Faisal and you to, to give us the interesting facts about underwater heritage and your, your previous work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Jasser. Before the beginning of the conversation, I remember that there is a number of questions. It will be, in the conversation, a number of questions that will be asked for the comments and comments. Uh, good night, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's my pleasure to introduce uh, you to a speaker tonight who will be speaking to you about the Red Sea Maritime Heritage uh, in the Omlej uh, Shipwreck. That would, should be the interested because it's still us about the revelation of cultural heritage 
uh, site along the, the coastal line in Saudi Arabia that should be uh, preserved, managed, and awareness raised in, uh, in this week. Our speaker tonight is uh, Prof. Kiara Zero. She's, uh, she has been uh, researching and teaching in the field maritime meteorology and petrographic and uh, Red Sea in uh, Indian Ocean since uh, 20 uh, years from, from uh, until uh, she has experienced Saudi Arabia for heritage and uh, underwater uh, survey in Farasan and also uh, Hamruj. Uh, she has uh, also conducting uh, ethnographic uh, research on different area in the mid, uh, Middle East. Uh, you are welcome, uh, Prof. Kiera, and you are Ken Stafford. Thank you. Good evening to everybody. Um, so I'll share the video first. Okay, so good evening to all. I would like to thank, first of all, the Ministry of Culture and the Heritage Commission for this invitation to talk about the Red Sea Maritime Heritage and for the opportunity also to resume underwater activities at the Umlaj shipwreck. In the first Excuse part me. of this... Doctor, uh, did you see the... Doctor, did you see the presentation? It's fine. Is it, is it okay? Yes. Can you share it? Yes, please. Can you see the presentation? Yes, yes. Good. So, the first part of this presentation, I will talk about uh, the maritime heritage in general. And after that, I will talk about uh, the Umlaj shipwreck. And the result we have, we have achieved all together with the Heritage Commission team. At the end, I will talk about our future plans for uh, the Umlaj shipwreck. Um, first of all, uh, I would like also to stress the principle on which it is based our research approach and the vocation of our university uh, to the study of the maritime heritage. Mm. Okay. Maritime heritage includes all material evidence representative of the relationship among human being and the maritime environment. As such, it is the most relevant remaining trace of how the identity of people living near the sea has been shaped, both by the interaction with the maritime environment and by the interaction with other people. In this perspective, a comprehensive study of maritime heritage in every region should include the study of shipwreck of all periods found in land or sea, submerged structures, coastal sites such as ports, houses, infrastructures, and ethnographic evidence Should've and folklore, such as traditional boots, fishing activities, sea song, burning, okay. etc. So, uh, why as Mediterranean people are we interested in the maritime heritage of the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean? In this slide, you can see a series of archaeological finds discovered in Pompeii and in the Campania region, which is the region from, we, from where I'm talking today. Uh, all these uh, finds uh, are coming originally from the Red Sea area and the Indian Ocean. Uh, you can see here these uh, very beautiful obsidian cups manufactured in Alexandria, but most likely coming originally from the Southern Red Sea. Um, this Pridacna shell, Kauri shell, tortoise shells, and these very beautiful uh, small statues in ivory from, uh, from India. And on the right side, you can see peppers and incense, which were uh, since antiquity, uh, the main products imported from the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean, and the, which are today on our uh, houses and are consumed daily. So um, in, uh, in house context and in public space, uh, like the incense, for example, in rituals. So all this find testifies how Mediterranean culture has also been shaped since earliest times by maritime interaction with the people, and products from Red Sea and the Indian Ocean. For this reason, at the University of Napoli Orientale, there is a long tradition of such studies, studies which dates back to the early 1990s. It is roughly in this period that, that more systematic studies on the maritime heritage of the Red Sea has started. 
earliest excavation were conducted on the Egyptian port sites of uh, Miosormos and Berenike that were um, uh, occupied during um, the Roman occupation of Egypt in the first century uh, AD and were the departing ports to, uh, to India. So the investigation of this site these two main sites, Miosormos and Berenice, has been uh, uh, then followed by the investigation of even more ancient port sites in the northern part of the Red Sea, in this area, dating to the pharaonic period, like Ein Sukna, Wadi al Jarf, and Mersagawasis. This latter was the port for the part from which ships departed from here to reach the southern Red Sea, the land of Punta. So this earliest investigation had the merit to underline the importance of the Red Sea in the earliest dynamics of a global interaction. In fact, since the pharaonic period, the Red Sea provided a connection among the Mediterranean and the Indian Ocean region. As for the Saudi side, earliest evidence of maritime activities and maritime interactions with the opposite coast are attested that since 8,000, 4,500 BP, uh, thanks to the investigation uh, conducted uh, by uh, Balin and others on the um, uh, study of uh, Farsan shell middens, which have very much in common with the um, shell middens found uh, identified on the, Alak, on the Dalak Island on the opposite coast. And the same uh, for the distribution of obsidian uh, on the um, Arabian coast and the African coast, which uh, um, have uh, uh, very close similarities. So, so all these prove uh, the existence of uh, uh, maritime interaction from both sides of the Red Sea from very ancient times. Um, investigation conducted at the Farazan Island by the Heritage Commission and the international teams such as Paris Sorbonne and the University of Exeter have also revealed other very important evidence of the ancient and recent past maritime heritage, as the presence of sites and ancient wells here, most likely used by the ship passing by there, or Roman inscriptions, very important, two very important Roman inscriptions, attesting the presence of a military Roman station there, most likely securing the Southern Red Sea from piracy. Um, on Farazan Island, that's been attested also the presence of pearling activities, which was one of the most important income on the island in the past century. Concerning coastal sites, on the Saudi side, the recent research have been conducted at Ainuna, Alwaj and al Kusai, with the aim to try to find out the location of the ancient Nabatean port site of Leukecome, which was mentioned in the Periplus Maris Eritrea of the first century AD. These sites of the northern sector are very important to understand the dynamics of caravan routes in relation with the maritime routes leading to the Near East and the Mediterranean. So those coastal sites should be investigated also in relation with the number of islands along the coast, which could have been not only stopping points for ships like Farazan, but also supporting infrastructure for import and export activities of the main ports located on the coast. Such pattern is attested in many cases in the city. In fact, some possible evidence of such activities of cargo loading are attested on the island in front of the Bay of Ainuna, where um, a sort of settlement uh, dating to the late antiquity period and um, a, a Natsumite coin uh, were discovered a few years ago. So the potential of the Red Sea coastal site in Saudi Arabia is, of course, enormous, if we also consider the geomorphological changes occurred during time, like the progradation of the coast, which means the sedimentation and the possible burial of ancient ports. So here we can see a series of lines going through towards the sea, and at the wadi mouth, this rounded shape of the coast, which means uh, an accumulation of uh, sediments during time, and uh, which could um, means also the fact that some uh, ancient port site may be under meters of sand today. So the potential of the 
geoarchaeological approach is huge, as it has been recently highlighted also by my colleague uh, Roma Valoreta. Concerning shipwreck site, they are not so easy to identify in the, in the Red Sea waters because of the rapid growth of the corals. In fact, very often, the only preserved evidence of an ancient shipwreck is only the cargo. Many shipwreck sites in the Red Sea has been accidentally identified by sport divers, and therefore they have been uh, mainly looted during time. The last decade has seen a relative increase of underwater archaeological activities, this time on the Saudi sides, such as the investigation of the Umlaj shipwreck and underwater surveys conducted um, around the Jeddah. So, before moving to the context of the Umlaj shipwreck, I would like to briefly underline why shipwreck sites are so important and what is their potential. Ships have to be considered as the most sophisticated machine created by human being in the past. At the same time, a boat was a mean for circulating commodities and people, and with them, ideas, religions, and cultural trades. Studying a shipwreck is to study a moment in history in which a catastrophe happened and see the evidence of the level of technological advancement of a society and specific economic and organizational aspect of that society. So, said that, among the various shipwreck sites in Red Sea, that of the Umlaj wreck is among the best preserved, together with the Sadana and the Sharm Sheikh shipwreck discovered in the 1990s and 1970s, and dated altogether to the 18th century. These three shipwrecks have very much in common. The very large sides, around 35, 40 meters and even more in length, the type of cargo, jars, porcelain, and exotic products coming from the Indian Ocean. Among these three shipwrecks, perhaps the Umlaj one is the better preserved, and the, the one that has major potential for understanding the type of ship, the architecture of the ship, and the trade dynamics in the Ottoman period. Mm, the discovery of the Umlaj shipwreck was uh, due circa 10 years ago to a group of sport divers uh, that were diving in that area. The shipwreck, in fact, uh, featured among uh, the most interesting dives uh, in, um, in a, dive of a diving company in Jeddah and it was known as the Chinese pottery. When the Heritage Commission recognized the importance of this discovery, the visit to the site was so for forbidden to all sport divers. As you can see in this drawing, the Lunumeliage shipwreck is located 20, 25 meters to the east of this is isolated reef, very small, uh, so only one kilometer reef which is located um, several miles uh, to the west of uh, the Umlaj town, uh, to the south of the Sheibara uh, reef, and uh, some miles uh, to the north of uh, Halassani uh, Island. According to historians, the island of Halassani uh, was used uh, in the past as a stopping uh, point for ships, which, because on the island, uh, there was provision of water, uh, sheep, and wood for the ships uh, that were passing there. So considering this, one would wonder why the shipwreck stopped in the middle of nowhere, basically, on uh, next to uh, an isolated reef, instead of uh, at the island of Alassani. So our idea is that the ship stopped first in Alassani, and then had to do a stop on this uh, reef, because, uh, Possible problems like a storm, uh, technical problem on, on board, or maybe the, 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 the merchantman just hit the reef accidentally because couldn't see it. Anyway, this is something that we will uh, uh, find out uh, uh, in the next, uh, in the future, continuing our investigation. Um, so this is another image of uh, the area and the reef where the wrecks are located. Um, so the fact that the ship contained uh, Chinese porcelain and other Indian Ocean products does not necessarily indicate direct navigation from the Indian Ocean for various reasons. 
To date, there is a lack of evidence of canons on board, as suggested by Ward when discussing the Sadana wreck. So this means that the ship was navigating in safe waters, so in the Ottoman Red Sea, which was a safe environment at that time. The Umanage wreck is therefore more likely to be placed among those ships mentioned in the Ottoman documents, which, which shuttled up and down the Red Sea from Jeddah to Suez. The porcelain may have been, uh, in fact, bought in the market of Jeddah. So those Ottoman documents also attest that, the, that these ships were not suitable for such voyages, and they failed many times. Uh, so in one century, the number of ships that were shuttled up and down the Red Sea reduced from 50 to 15. So many of them wrecked or went destroyed. Um, they were expensive and time-consuming construction, so the wood uh, had to be transported from the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, there were taxes to pay for uh, the wood arriving in, in, uh, in, uh, in Egypt. Uh, and apparently they were also poorly built, uh, likely in the Suez boatyards. They were too long and too deep, they were difficult to maneuver and near impossible to tack. So all characteristics that uh, goes against the characteristic of the Red Sea. And in fact, they were forced to sail north from October to May, and the navigation towards north apparently took two months against only the 20 days to sail uh, down uh, towards south. This is for the um, um, main um, north, uh, nor northerly wind that uh, uh, blows all the year in, uh, in the Red Sea area. So at the end, of this, this, uh, these huge ships were replaced uh, by Indian ships that were uh, smaller, but more uh, resistant, apparently. Uh, so anyway, with this background in mind, um, in 2016, the Commission Heritage invited uh, a team of the Università Orientale to undertake an underwater survey uh, of a section of the Red Sea uh, Saudi coast between Yambu and Umlej. The first season took place in September and the second a year later, and uh, given the short time available for the survey, the team decided to focus only on the Umlaj shipwrecks. So since uh, our first visit, we realized the good state of conservation of the hull, as you can see here, the wooden remains of uh, uh, the central structure and the frames, some of them also emerging from the sand and covered with the vegetation and with the corals. And then uh, a jar mound was also in a good state of preservation thanks to the calcium carbonate that sealed all together these jars. So, so they were not looted because they were all uh, glued together. Um, so first thing we did uh, after locating the shipwrecks uh, with the GPS was uh, a photo, a general, oh, sorry, photogrammetry of the area in order to get the bathymetry and to get a general plan which we could map and, um, and characterize on the basis of the different evidence that were, uh, were visible. Um, then we decided to focus on the documentation of the mound and the jars. Therefore, we cleaned the jar surface very well, carefully, in order to make uh, the decoration and all the, all the characteristic of the jars very visible in the photogrammetry. And the result was a very high resolution, very good high resolution 3D model. You can see here better, uh, which allowed us to study uh, the jars at home, once at home. We had all the time to, uh, enough time to study uh, every single uh, jar. Uh, and uh, we were able to differentiate the different type. So we estimated around 2000 jars uh, composing the mound, and almost 300 different uh, types of jars. Main types represented uh, were uh, Pulal, Dorak, and uh, General Jars. If, if we compare these typologies with the other shipwrecks, we have very little information on the shamus shaped shipwreck, a bit more on the Sadana, uh, but the percentage uh, seems to be uh, similar, consistent. 
Um, so the study of the different typologies uh, of jars suggests that there's provenance for this uh, part of the cargo, um, the area around Macca or the Tiama coastal plain. It is interesting to note that the center for the production of similar jars were also tested in the Nile Valley and in Damascus. Therefore, the presence of those jars in the cargo may be explained as a mass product transported with the aim to fill the whole ship as much as possible in order to get enough fit from the return voyage. This is an hypothesis for the moment, of course. Other elements of the cargo include the Zilla jars, most likely used for the transport of water or so the water provision for the crew, or maybe also for the transport of wheat. Metal vessels were also identified. Uh, they still need to be better investigated. Some of them might be in silver, as found also on the Sadana shipwreck. In any case, they seem to be very well preserved. Uh, glass bottles, remains of glass bottles and pipes attesting uh, uh, part of the equip equipment uh, taken from the crew on board. Uh, and in particular, it's interesting uh, the presence of uh, Ottoman style pipe. And then uh, we attested the presence of coconuts and, uh, and uh, remains of bones, uh, so organic material, which suggests us the presence of an invisible cargo made of organic commodities, perhaps exotic products like uh, spices, coffee, that still need to be identified. So a large part of the cargo, we think, was... Uh, um, was uh, included uh, this type of, uh, of, uh, of products that we need to find out by doing sedimentological analysis of the sand. So the most relevant part of the cargo is in any case the Chinese porcelain. We found many complete and fragmentary coffee cup with a wide variety of decoration motifs. The porcelain has been studied by our colleague uh, Chiara Visconti, um, and her study allowed uh, the dating of the shipwreck to the first half of uh, uh, the 18th century. In particular, thanks to this particular type of decorative motif with the pine, which is identical to the motifs recorded on the porcelain cargo of the Geldermarsen ship a ship of the Deutsche East Indian Company, which wrecked in Indonesia, and that was already uh, uh, investigated uh, time ago. So, the porcelain suggests that this part of the cargo started this voyage in uh, um, the region uh, of Canton, in southern China, and continued in India, perhaps on board of European merchantmen then continued through the Western Indian Ocean up to the Southern Red Sea, to Jeddah or Mocha, um, on board of, uh, of Indian ships. The only ships that operated in this part uh, of, the, of the Indian Ocean at that time of the Red Sea. Uh, the last part of the trip was uh, supposed to, to be accomplished by the Ottoman vessels uh, that uh, we found, so the type of vessels like the Umlej, Sadana, and Sham -e Sheikh. So um, the, the route of the, uh, of the cargo is much, as you can see, much wider than the route of the ship in itself. So the analysis of the cargo suggests the following. The ship was carrying provision of wheat, barley, rice, beans, and oil from Egypt to the population of Mecca, according to uh, the Ottoman documents. And on the return voyage, voyage the ship transported the mass product like uh, jars, tobacco pipes, and exotic products for a more competitive market. Uh, this trade included in the overall three continents. Concerning the, arch the architecture of the hull, main features that have been uh, examined on the site um, are highlighted in this map. So the Kilson, this uh, huge element in the central part, the frames, and uh, also a deck level, so a level of which, a uh, second level of, of deck, uh, which needs uh, more investigation. Um, 
So by removing a little bit of sand on the exposed par part near uh, the frames, it was possible to prove that the planking is also very well preserved and is also quite thick. Uh, the thickness is, is quite wide. On the right, you can see the remains of this possible deck next to the mound of jars. Um, so uh, in this slide, you can see comparison among the three shipwreck on the basis of the architectural features and wood analysis. So you can see that the size is similar between 35 and 40 maximum, estimated maximum 50 meters in length, which is huge. Uh, the three shipwreck were all uh, uh, nailed, and the species uh, analysis revealed the use of uh, Pinus, Quercus, uh, all species that come from uh, the Mediterranean, in particular the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, frame dimension is similar, it's quite consistent, uh, so as uh, frame spacing. So the results of uh, the first two field season uh, are uh, that we achieved is uh, uh, that we have a general idea of the site, thanks to the, the survey we conducted and the mapping. We managed to date uh, the wreckage uh, very precisely, thanks to the uh, porcelain. Um, thanks to the analysis of the wood, we have a more idea of the origin of the ship. So it should be... Uh, built in the Gulf of Suez, uh, but uh, with materials coming from the Mediterranean. Uh, we achieved also a preliminary study of the cargo, quite, uh, quite precise for the porcelain and uh, also for the jars, and uh, um, general understanding of the route of the cargo and of the ship. So future program, Sorry, will consist uh, in understanding the site formation, so how the ship wrecked and how the, um, the site formed. Uh, we need to conduct an in-depth study of the ship architecture, which would lead to a virtual reconstruction of the ship. So this can be achieved only after uh, uh, full excavation. Um, and then we have to think about in situ conserv conservation strategy, in-depth study of the invisible cargo, so the analysis of the sediment. Uh, how to recover the part of the cargo and how to make a management plan uh, of conservation for, for the cargo that we will recover. Uh, the 2021 program will include so the excavation of a portion of the hull. I don't think we will manage to uncover the, the whole ship because it's, it's very huge. Uh, to recover part of the cargo and to study the environment and the expected results are to have a better understanding of the architecture um, and to estimate also more how much time we need to excavate the whole uh, ship, uh, better understanding of the cargo and which conservation strategy to apply, and then understanding better the environment in order to understand the physical, chemical and biological factor that affected the site formation and preservation. And this can be uh, really um, very useful for future investigation in the Red Sea because uh, any uh, kind of these studies has been conducted before uh, in, in this environment. Um, other uh, ideas for the 2021 program are a systematic sampling of uh, wood remain for species analysis to better understand the ship architecture and provenance, sediment sampling in order to better understand the invisible cargo, so to find out what kind of spices were on board. And uh, further, uh, for the future, uh, we would like uh, to achieve to have complete photogrammetry of the hull uh, remain, so to have a complete 3D model of the hull remain in order to conduct analysis on the distortion of the hull uh, and uh, to achieve to a reconstruction of the original hull shape in order to conduct the hydrostatic analysis and to, to study the performances that, that could achieve this type of, of boat. So mainly to uh, do an in-depth study of the technology of, of the ship. So the 2021 Italian team includes uh, myself and my colleague Romolo Loreto, uh, Salvatore Corella, who is an expert for photogrammetry. Chiara Visconti, already, already named, is a uh, uh, professor in our university, specialist for Chinese porcelain. 
Luisa Terminiello, who started the study of the jars, and our colleague Mattia, Matteo Delle Donne, who is uh, uh, said he, he could conduct sediment analysis, and then two engineers in, for future studies of the HAL, Claudio Penza and Luigi Ombrato, who can conduct with us HAL analysis and reconstruction and hydrostatic analysis. So, um, of course, not all these people will be present on the field, only three of us, so me, myself, Romolo, and, uh, and Salvatore. Uh, and then we, we really want to, um, to involve someone for the conservation, so we are uh, negotiating with uh, um, our ministry and the superintendenza to, uh, to invite someone in the future to, to take care of this, uh, to discuss at least with, uh, with us and we, with you, with the Heritage Commission, how to preserve these materials. So I thank you, everybody very much. Thank you for your attention. Uh, and uh, I would like to share uh, a video about uh, uh, the Umlej uh, shipwreck. Uh, it's uh, if you want to go on also with the questions after or during the, the video. So thank you very much again. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can you?
Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Kira. It was like amazing presentation and uh, very interesting. Uh, I have a uh, few questions if you don't mind. Uh, the very cool, first question is two parts. The first question is uh, why you are interested in the Red Sea, especially, and if do you have any uh, activities in Arabian Gulf or any research in Arabian Gulf? Um, well, uh, I am interested, as I said in the beginning, uh, the cultural heritage, maritime cultural heritage of the Red Sea is uh, uh, is a common heritage for us in the Mediterranean because uh, since antiquity, uh, we we were used to receive products from the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean. So, uh, since I was uh, I started to study story, I got interested in this connection among Mediterranean and uh, and the Indian Ocean. And the Red Sea is really a passage, a, a, a link among these two worlds. So that that's why. And. Um, uh, the, the second question, yes, I did some uh, some work in Qatar uh, and uh, I worked on uh, traditional boats. Uh, so with, with some colleagues from Exeter University, we did the uh, 3D photogrammetry of a collection of, uh, of uh, traditional Arab boats uh, in Doha. So they are now exposed in the new uh, museum in Doha, in the National Museum in Doha. So this is mainly main, main thing I did there, <laughs> more ethnography. Uh, I just uh, let you the, the audience that uh, we are open the, the chat. You can uh, put their question and we can uh, ask the speaker uh, directly. Uh, the second question is uh, how to, is there any any uh, effect of the artifacts, are the uh, artifacts is affected by the salt and when you get it out of the sea, is there any routine or maintenance to keep it, you know, uh, as it is? Uh, yes, uh, for uh, every type of material, uh, we need uh, to to be very careful because it's uh, uh, is a real change of uh, the state of uh, of the material. So. Um, First thing is uh, for the wood. Wood is uh, probably the most fragile uh, material, so uh, we are not, uh, we do not intend to to move the wood from uh, from the from the sea. We would like to leave it uh, on the bottom and to to document it underwater. And while uh, for the other materials, uh, porcelain is the most resistant, so it shouldn't be very much affected. While uh, jars can be uh, can be very much affected because uh, as soon as they are exposed to the sun and to the air, uh, the salt crystallizes and can break the surface of uh, of the of the jar. So they have to be kept into the water, and then they have to go under a process of desalinization, which is. Uh, long and uh, and that's all the, the attention. So this is why we really need a conservator with us. Yes. Uh, there is another Prepare question. The uh, the materials. Okay. Uh, there is another question. What's the what the our main risk? The main risk of uh, to uh, facing a shipwreck or the diving or or the explore to 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 find the. Uh, the main, the main risk facing the, the shipwreck okay. to, to explore the any any artifacts. The the main sorry. The the main uh, risk. How uh, to risk, face okay. the risk. Okay. <laughs> It, it, uh, we are quite safe there because it's only uh, 22, 20, 22 meters, so it's not too deep. Um, so it's, it's, we have just to be careful to respect uh, the time of uh, diving and so on. Uh, we did meet some uh, small sharks, but uh, they go away after, uh, after we arrive because they're scared more than us. Mm -hmm. so for, for divers that are used to dive, uh, there are not... Uh, a real uh, real risk because the depth is not uh, too much so it's, it's it's safe if you know how to dive <laughs> yeah uh, also there is another uh, question uh, if the i i know as uh, my experience that the diving can reach uh, until 60 meter uh, how about the risk beyond this depth you know for example more than 60 meter what's the the procedure for that 
and uh, you need to to use uh, special uh, equipment and uh, special check medical checks and so on i personally i, I never did the research at the this depth because uh, so you really need to have to be technical diver for this uh, so yeah for sure the risk is increased in, in this case but uh, there are archaeological investigation conducted uh, at that depth uh, even even uh, more deep mm -hmm. it's not my case <laughs> uh, there is also there is uh, another question uh, what's the is there any experience in the whole world for uh, how to keep this uh, shipwrecks as like uh, visiting to tourism for uh, diving for something like that is it do you have any experience on the whole world what do you think for that uh, to be honest, uh, not uh, much, but uh, this is something that we really would like to plan with the conservator. not only of the materials but also all, all of the old side so they know how to, uh, to preserve and to make a uh, for populist and so make a sort of protective uh, uh, structure around it that can be open when it come or wait uh, for other clothes there or an other camp can be used also to show to, to visitors so that they cannot die if how to uh, how the 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 wreck is uh, uh, is like um, mm -hmm. it's a way one, um, to move different water tours for people that cannot dive. So um, in Italy, did, uh, not me, but uh, many conservators has done uh, as experience in this field, and uh, would be nice to do to suggest something similar for the Mulad shipwreck because it's really worth it. There is so much to see. <laughs> Okay, uh, there is also a question. Uh, could you clarify the further uh, the method of the photogrammetry? Uh, sorry, say again. C uh, could you clarify further the method of the photogrammetry? Okay, yes. Uh, it will it consist in taking um, many pictures um, that has to be overlapped for sixty uh, percent one on the other. So. Um, you have to really cover the whole surface with the many many pictures we took i think for the only for the mound uh, we took uh, something like 700 pictures so it's for a 10 meters uh, diameter of uh, of the mound uh, and so it, it was quite uh, difficult for the computer to process afterwards so mainly it consists in taking uh, very good uh, pictures that overlap each other and then put all of them on the computer. There are spe specific software that uh, can process them and um, make uh, after a few hours a 3D model that uh, can be used for many, uh, many different um, scopes. So uh, the, the final aim is to have a 3D model and from there you can have a map, you can cut sections. You can study in detail uh, the shipwreck. So. Uh, there is also a good question: When the shipwreck considered as a heritage site? As question. a heritage? As a, uh, what's when the shipwreck considered as a heritage site? Uh, starting from which uh, period do you mean? Yes. You know. uh, I. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I think uh, this one for sure is 18th century is an heritage. Uh, and the historical uh, shipwrecks also from the World War uh, One and Two are considered uh, heritage. Yes. But let's say it's a win. When will be like something? It's not like a, you know this year or last year. Not even. When will be like a, that's a, the heritage site. Um, it is already no. I think. Okay. Uh, also, there is. Uh, I think that's uh, also a question. Go to come. Uh, can the Commission uh, explain the process to report the suspected underwater heritage sites? 
Yes. Uh, yes, I think uh, they, they, they should. It should be done uh, with um, maybe with the, with the help of underwater camera, for example, that can help uh, in monitoring. Uh, can be useful for the heritage, commission heritage to monitor uh, shipwrecks uh, sites and water sites. So it, uh, yeah, it's something that should be done by the commission. Yes. Uh, also, there is a uh, how's your uh, assessment uh, that uh, uh, when you compare the uh, say uh, Saudi coastal line uh, with other hubs beside the country uh, to compare the Saudi line with the other country. Uh, oh, the, uh, uh, well, it's it's uh, it's very different because I mean at, at least to the Mediterranean environment, for example, because it's very uh, arid and uh, sandy, and uh, mm, so it's it's comparing to many other places uh, along the coast is not uh, populated as much as uh, Italian coast, for example. So the majority of the population in Italy lives on the coast, while uh, uh, in South is uh, is the opposite. So. Um, my my first impression was that uh, was quite uh, desertic and uh, not um, uh, not much built. Let's say so. In this case, the potential for um, for archaeological investigation is huge because they have not been uh, impacted. Like uh, for example, in Farazan Island, uh, many archaeological sites are visible because uh, the island was not inhabited for uh, for a long time. Uh, just a question for the uh, Farasan uh, Island. When you compare it with, uh, let's say, let's say it's called south of the Red Sea and uh, north of the Red Sea, what's the difference uh, between this as uh, underwater? Um, uh, you mean uh, the Farasan Island or in general the underwater regional? Uh, the island it's uh, Farasan Island is in the south. When you compare it with the, you know, the north, uh, what's yeah, the difference? Uh, as, uh, Yes, uh, far, well, what I found very interesting in Farazan is that uh, the island is very rich of water, so it, uh, for sure in antiquity it was a very important uh, passage for ships. So this is why there are important archaeological sites and uh, great potential. As for the north, uh, on the coast, I have only been to, to Ainuna and the rest I know from literature. Uh, I think there is a great potential there as well, uh, but um, and in the Case more because of the connection with the caravan routes uh, inland. So maybe the major interest in the north would be to see the relationship with the caravan routes and in the south uh, the maritime routes. Uh, there is also the, the question: What's uh, what is expected in the archaeological uh, excavation in the Red Sea? Uh, from the Saudi side, uh, I think uh, there, there is a very good uh, potential. Uh, it's true that it's difficult to identify shipwrecks because of the corals, uh, but uh, as it is an area that has not been uh, uh, exploited so much by tourism and uh, by previous archaeological investigation, I think uh, that uh, the potential is, is really huge. Uh, we, we can expect uh, many archaeological sites, uh, on the, I mean shipwrecks, but also coastal sites. Mm -hmm. Just wait for the question. Also, there is a question also that so it comes, uh, uh, you mentioned in the, in the presentation that you're close to uh, Mecca area. There is uh, all the uh, what do you recommend for this area from the for the all the navigation? Uh, you know that's in uh, hundreds yes. of years. Yes, the the area around the Jeddah it's uh, it has been proved to be interesting as well. Uh, the a German university has conducted the investigation there and uh, uh, they found evidence of uh, of cargo. Uh, not uh, wooden parts of ship, but uh, the cargo. So it, and uh, even dating from the Roman period. So um, the potential of underwater exploration it's uh, it's enormous also because it's on a, a very big uh, chronological uh, uh, period, from the Roman period, uh, maybe even earlier to the 18th, 19th century. 
so Jeddah, yes, uh, for sure, the area around Jeddah could be very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, the, there was also a question, uh, what's the procedure when you f find uh, artifacts? Uh, what do you recommend to take it out or just leave it with the, some protection of some dependent? What do you recommend for it? Yes, I strongly recommend that to leave the wood uh, as it is because it's uh, very fragile and difficult to, um, to preserve. Uh, and as for uh, porcelain, we already took some porcelains out of the water for studying and uh, they reacted uh, very well, very, uh, very resistant. Uh, but for the future, I recommend uh, to build uh, a structure uh, on purpose, a laboratory for uh, keeping all these materials. Um, so maybe we can do a trial with uh, with a few materials and see how we can store them, how we can arrange a laboratory, and then um, for the future I, I envisage uh, like a, a big uh, uh, storerooms or something to to keep and uh, to work on the conservation of this material before uh, they are exposed in museums and so on. So um, basically, it's with uh, pools for. Uh, the water where they can go through the process of desalinization. Um, uh, yeah, this, uh, you are mentioning your presentation that you are uh, upcoming, you know, future work with the with the Ritzy. Uh, I don't want to mention about the project that, but I mean, uh, any projects coming, uh, not one that related to the, the King of Asia University. Either if there any uh, coming the project? Uh, you mean a part uh, coming project apart uh, this one? The yes. Moment? Yes. Oh uh, no, not for the moment because uh, the project has been suspended because of COVID. So at the moment, Saudi Arabia is the only country that is allowing us to come. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Even I cannot uh, do any field work with my students at the moment. Maybe next year. In uh, in Italy. Uh, also, there is a uh, question. Uh, what's the benefit uh, of this uh, heritage? This and it, what's the benefit? Uh, I think you are, you answered the question, but maybe the, what's the benefit of that uh, uh, in the water heritage? For us. Yes. For us as uh, as Italians, so you mean. <laughs> Um, well, for, for us, as I said, it's, uh, it's also part of our, we consider it also part of our history. So, uh, and the Ottoman presence uh, in uh, Egypt uh, is a sort of uh, um, cultural interface among uh, the East and uh, in the Mediterranean, uh, because they were based in a country that is geographical yeah. at the interface among the Mediterranean and the Red Sea. So uh, I consider it as, uh, as also part of, uh, of our history. And um, yeah, in fact, I think that that natural type of the Umlaj shipwrecks uh, is more uh, Mediterranean uh, than uh, than the Indian Ocean. And in fact, uh, the boat was not so suitable for the Red Sea, mm -hmm. and the wood was from the Mediterranean as well. And also, I, I think it's very interesting that uh, the Umlaj shipwrecks uh, it's. Uh, uh, it dates to a period before the opening of uh, the Suez Canal. Uh, so before uh, uh, European historian uh, uh, could uh, say anything about the Red Sea, so we don't have uh, a part of the Ottoman documents. So we don't have historian uh, uh, talking about uh, this trade. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, really very little known uh, for us. Uh, also, there is another question. Also, uh, what do you think of the role of Saudi Arabia as a major economy location in the world, according to the previous? Uh, Research and discoveries. <laughs> I'm not expert in economy. I'm sorry, but I think uh, the the potential for, for investing uh, in uh, in cultural heritage is for sure is huge. Uh, there is so much to do. It uh, it can be uh, one of the investment for uh, for good for the economy of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, invest more on the on the cultural heritage. Why not for tourism and so on. Uh, how about the activities in Iranian research in, uh, in, uh, in the Mediterranean uh, north of uh, Egypt? Is there any any research or any uh, discovering about the underwater heritage? Uh, 
in uh, Egypt? Uh, north of Egypt, you know, in, in the Mediterranean. Ah, okay, yes. We, we have uh, very good uh, Egyptian colleagues that want uh, to resume the excavation of the Sadana shipwreck. So it will be good if they can, uh, uh, because the shipwreck was excavated in the 1990s and uh, it was not finished. So if uh, they, they will manage to continue the excavation of the Sadana shipwreck, we have uh, two similar example of shipwrecks that can be compared. Um, so I think uh, the Egyptian side of the Red Sea also is uh, it's very rich. The only problem is that uh, many shipwrecks there have been uh, looted uh, by the tourists because there was no control for many years or uh, not enough control. It's not so easy to control uh, uh, the, the divers, uh, their sport divers there. So. I think the Saudi side is more preserved. Uh, also, there is uh, another uh, question. You know, um, what kind of shipwreck or the length of shipwreck or how is the big shipwreck that you consider it as the uh, heritage site? Largest. Uh, why, yeah, why I'm asking you, oh, there is a small boat or small uh, yacht, something, you know, to the, or something which uh, considered as a heritage or which kind of heritage you or uh, shipwreck do you consider as a heritage uh, sites? Yes, even uh, only a few remains of a cargo can be considered a heritage, of course, heritage site. Even uh, only two amphoras or three amphoras found on the bottom of the sea uh, can be considered uh, part of the heritage. They, they are not uh, proper site, then uh, you have to find out if uh, they were part of a ship or just scattered materials. But if they were uh, part of a ship, even if the ship is not preserved, it can be considered uh, uh, a shipwreck site. Uh, doesn't matter the, the dimensions, uh, I think. Yeah, uh, according to this uh, question, uh, there is another question. Uh, as you know, the current and wave. Uh, do you think this uh, it can be a fix and move the shipwreck from from their location or regular location to the other location? Uh, the umlaj. The, the not all the umlaj. Any any shipwreck. There is a ah, current no. and wave. You know. Uh, yeah. Do you think it's uh, moving by? Uh, uh, any effect by? Uh, by them of a current wave to move it from the original side to the other side? No, it's, it's not a good idea to move uh, shipwrecks or um, other heritage sites from the place they are. So the, the, the first solution should be, should be the in situ conservation, uh, preservation and to leave uh, the, the, the evidence as it is in the context so that the people can understand uh, the find in its own context as much as possible. Uh, also, there is a, as, uh, from your experience, what makes the Saudi underwater heritage stand out? <laughs> uh, for, I think from many, I mean, the, the underwater part needs uh, still to be investigated, but uh, already the homelage uh, uh, shipwrecks is outstanding because of uh, the size of the ship and the amount of uh, uh, cargo that can be studied. Uh, and then I consider my important maritime heritage, also all uh, the ethnographic uh, evidences there that can be studied uh, uh, on, the, on the Saudi Arabian coast. All the activities that are still ongoing, uh, even uh, if uh, in small scale, like pearling or uh, traditional fishing or traditional boat building, uh, wooden construction. This is all, there are all aspects that need uh, to be preserved and uh, recorded. Um, and then, as I said, uh, in Farazan Islands, I was uh, impressed by all these sites that uh, are visible on the surface, that are uh, open to everybody. So uh, the, the richness uh, and the potential uh, uh, of the coast, because it has not been built uh, so much as the Italian coast, for example, uh, it's, it's outstanding in this sense. Um, but uh, yeah, so far maybe the Umbred shipwreck is the one, the, the most impressive uh, evidence I found. Uh, I think there are many, many questions uh, related to this question. 
the, the audience ask you, but anyway, uh, there is also the, the question that's uh, with the situation by open enthusiastic uh, to participate. Uh, the team? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, it's uh, the, me, myself, of course, I was uh, dreaming to do this experience. And uh, my colleague uh, Romolo also is not uh, uh, is not formed as an underwater archaeologist, but uh, he can dive. So uh, when uh, we decided to to start this uh, venture, it was of course uh, uh, more than happy to do that, even if it was, uh, was not uh, his uh, specialty. And um, and then the first time we brought also students, uh, and uh, for them I think uh, it was a life experience. They still remember it. Uh, the Saudi team also, and the relation uh, with them uh, was uh, was uh, very good. So I think for everybody it was uh, a unique experience, uh, especially for the fact that uh, we we lived uh, on, on board for one week, uh, very far away from the coast. So it's uh, it's in a, in a new environment for us as well, uh, with all the risks and so on. Uh, the question just also, uh, what's the how's the people want to participate in this? Uh, this uh, role of the uh, water heritage. Uh, sorry, sorry, again, what was for the, the people outside? Some we want to want to participate. What do you think about that? Uh, people so anybody, from outside. Yeah, anybody from outside, or there's the requirement to, to be in the uh, uh, this team or some uh, archaeologists or, or just uh, if. Archaeologists, if they are professional archaeologists, then the, 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 they can maybe apply. Uh, no, from anyone, from anyone who want, want to participate, as like you know, interested for this. Is there any requirement to to be in the in the team or participate for uh, any project? Uh, okay. Uh, yes, uh, to have experience, of course, to have experience uh, in underwater uh, survey or excavation. And being a, a good diver is very important because we cannot take risks. Uh, so safety first, being a good diver and uh, a good archaeologist, these two things, and a good curriculum and knowledge of the Saudi Arabia, of, of these uh, regions and this, uh, the history of these regions. Mm -hmm. uh, many questions uh, asking about the coral reef and Red Sea as your experience as a diver. What do you think for uh, uh, the Red Sea has uh, like a uh, has like a coral reef. What what do you think? Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's uh, it's very important um, to 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 preserve the environment. This is why uh, I asked uh, to your university actually to maybe provide some specialists uh, for uh, studying the environment uh, because we do not want to, to impact the environment uh, during our uh, excavation. Uh, we we really care for uh, for the reef. We know that this is a fragile environment. And so we have to find the right balance among uh, archaeological excavation and preservation of the environment. Um, so I think that uh, it has to be carefully preserved uh, as archaeological uh, evidences as well. Also, there is a question uh, as you from Italy. Uh, do you think in, in Italy something, uh, uh, how's the ship break there? They has like uh, uh, underwater heritage there in Italy or close to the Italy? Yes, yes. So we have many shipwreck sites uh, in Italy. Um, also from from the same period, uh, um, we some of them have, have been uh, investigated. Some other will be investigated in the future. Uh, but uh, yes, we 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 have many um, many ships uh, that are uh, interesting. Uh, as much. maybe not like uh, the cargo of the Umlaj shipwreck, but. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Still very important from the historical point of view. We have shipwrecks dating from uh, the Greco-Roman period to the modern uh, age, uh, all around the coast of uh, uh, of Italy. Italy has uh, a maritime heritage that is huge because is uh, is um, uh, the, the 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 coast around Italy are uh, are uh, very uh, extended. So. Uh, also, there is a the maritime, Italian maritime heritage is it's quite uh, 
wide. <laughs> uh, we also, also there have is... um, archaeological park, uh, especially in, in this region, with the structures and so on. Uh, there is also a good question. Uh, did you find any human traces in the Red Sea or any uh, other place? Hello? Yes, did you find any uh, human traces uh, in the Red Sea or any another place? Did you hear? Hello? Hello? Yes, Victor, did you hear me? Hello? Hello, Victor. Hello, Victor. I think there is a the communication is low. Uh, just wait a second. Hopefully, we back to us. Oh, yes, Victor. Yes. yes. Do you hear me? Okay. okay. Sorry for this. Uh, it's okay. Uh, there is a good question. Uh, did you find any uh, human traces in the Red Sea or any another place? Uh, not so far. No, I never excavated the tombs in my career. <laughs> Thankfully. Yeah, just uh, there is some question that's not related to our topic. Uh, I think we still have maybe 14 minutes. Uh, we just vote for some, some question uh, in the in the YouTube, also in the forum in the Twitter, but uh, still. Uh, there is one also that's there. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's the good question, to be honest. You know, we also we discuss it in the in our our university. Uh, there is no major major uh, topic, for example, a diploma or a master, or it's in a bachelor degree. Uh, do you think uh, is that a very important? How is the future of this major? Uh, be honest, that we discuss it with, within uh, our team in Egypt also to to be uh, to build a diploma uh, for uh, for these people interested for uh, underwater heritage, especially. What do you think in, in these people? It's how is the future? I. I think is a. Can you hear me? Because uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I think it's a, it's a very good uh, idea, and uh, the the potential and the future for in this field is uh, it's a huge because of the, uh, the 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 Saudi coast is so long, so there is so much to to investigate and to protect and to monitor, and you also have uh, the coast on the other uh, side, so. Um, I, I think uh, to develop a program uh, for uh, uh, people that are interested in uh, in in learning more about underwater archaeology, it's uh, it's an excellent uh, idea, and uh, yeah, it would be nice uh, to do program joint program also with uh, with the European University and um, as we sometimes we do with other universities to exchange. Uh, uh, in training, for example, training courses and things like this. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems that one uh, one question that uh, regarding to this question, uh, uh, how about the, your uh, your university or any another university in Europe or outside Europe? 
uh, how to develop uh, our Saudi young to, to be in the certified in the uh, archaeological and water architecture. Um, uh, um, I, I think it's, uh, uh, you mean uh, what, what is uh, what do you need to certify a course in underwater archaeology? Yes, any anyone interested in the university, uh, in the university or another university, something like certified or like something uh, professional um, certificate. Well, if and at uh, graduate, um, in uh, in our university, we have uh, uh, courses of maritime archaeology at uh, under. Graduate and graduate level, uh, uh, but um, I am the only professor teaching this uh, discipline. Uh, while in Europe, we have uh, very good uh, masters that uh, are focusing only on maritime uh, archaeology, uh, like um, Ex Marcel Yelmak is a master for under archaeology, but also a very good master. Um, which gives a certificate for uh, specialization in underwater archaeology. Okay, that's also a good question. Uh, is there any, any uh, I think that's a question to be like, a, it's not belong to you, but anyway, uh, uh, as your experience, uh, did you find the locations from your side or any any you know any internationally cooperation with the Heritage Commission to find the rig in the Red Sea? Um, location of other shipwreck. Oh, the shipwreck, yeah, shipwreck in the Red Sea. Uh, yeah, I, I heard about the Jeddah area, and then uh, I heard about. Uh, um, shipwrecks in the Aqaba Gulf, Gulf also. There might be something, uh, um, they show me some uh, uh, Aqaba type of amphoras uh, dating to the 6th, 7th century AD that were found underwater there. So, um, yeah, I think there are uh, from the south to the north uh, many uh, other shipwrecks or potential shipwrecks, at least the cargo. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, there is a question as like uh, if you find uh, uh, a ship link between two countries, for example, especially in the Europe or something, what's the, the rule? Uh, it's from the, from the United Nations or from the UNESCO or something. What's the rule? How does the, the, this rig ship belong to? Yeah, the UNESCO suggests the cooperation, of course, of uh, the two countries or more countries so to. Uh, excavate, study, uh, preserve, mainly to, to preserve the, the site. So cooperation is the, the first thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we still have eight minutes. Uh, we still wait for any, any question. Also, there's also there's a question. Uh, for example, uh, uh, I think I already asked ask you about the there is a ship break, For example, seven hundred meter depth. Uh, I know some specialist equipment can can do, or some can. Uh, I know the, the diver cannot go there. What I mean? Uh, did you find any any or did you use any equipment for specially for like uh, beyond you know for hundred meters depth? Uh, no, personally, no, I never uh, used any uh, type of technology to investigate shipwrecks at that, uh, at that depth. But uh, in the Mediterranean, uh, yes, there are uh, many colleagues that uh, experimented the uh, investigation of uh, uh, deep, uh, deep sites, uh, either with the robo, so using uh, robotics uh, or uh, special equipment uh, to to photograph and to record the, the evidence uh, uh, with the, um, with the um, mechanical instruments, yeah. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, there is also a question, uh, how many hours they spend the diver to find uh, or looking for an underwater heritage? The diver. Uh, for a survey. Yeah. Yes. Why for say underwater for diving? For example, for uh, which, how, how many how many hours or how many days do you cover? Ah, okay, yes. Uh, we we used to dive uh, circa three times, uh, two three times per day uh, for uh, um, 20, 30 minutes each time, uh, more or less. So we rotated. Uh, the, we we would dive uh, in four people or six people, and then after uh, others would go underwater. And uh, yeah, then the overall uh, maximum 30, 35 minutes on the water on the side and then uh, and then back. Uh, for uh, um, both times, we stayed uh, circa one week. So not so long, but um, as we did the photogrammetry, we could, uh, we documented, the, we collect uh, a lot of documentation. So the work on the desk was uh, more hours than that on the water. <laughs> Uh, how about the, the weather? Do you think it's uh, the weather affects the survey uh, time? Sometimes, you know. Mm, yes, it uh, it could. Yes, uh, in our case, uh, we found always uh, good weather, not uh, strong wind. But uh, in that area, you can get very strong winds from from the north. So I think we we were lucky. But uh, sometimes it uh, could be difficult. Uh, with the, with strong winds, I think in, uh, maybe in January, February it could be roast. I don't know exactly. Uh, you should know better the, than me, I think. Uh, that's I think there's another question. It's already uh, asked about it. Uh, five minutes uh, left. There is any any question? Uh, Uh, this question uh, it comes from from me. Well, as as uh, as I'm a photographer for that, uh, I know that the good the good uh, equipment uh, using its uh, size scanner. Uh, do you think, uh, for example, multi beam or size scan or single beam, something like that? Do you think it's it's uh, useful for 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 this underwater heritage or for shipwreck especially? Uh, could, could you please repeat? I mean, I mean, the, the equipment you use it, you use it for the for the ship break, you know. I know that you are using the camera and go inside the the diver, go inside and uh, see what you and you can uh, research about it. For example, for the for the ship that uh, our ship in King of the Sea ship, they have uh, side scan. Do you think a side scan or any equipment multi beam? useful for the for the ship break okay. um no i think for the umlaj shipwreck we don't uh, need it at the moment because it's um it, it's um, visible uh, the remain the wooden remains are visible so there is not much uh, sediment we we don't uh, and we manage to do the bathymetry with the photogrammetry um, so I think uh, for the Umlaj shipwreck, we don't need any type of uh, this equipment, but for uh, an extended uh, survey, of course, it will be useful. Uh, maybe also for Sandy Bottom, I f it would be useful to have a um, sub-bottom profiler to see if there are, uh, um, there are shipwrecks under the sediment, for example. Uh, also, this good, good question. Uh, I face this uh, one in, as uh, as a project. Uh, do you recommend for the submerged the, the ship break that has a part of uh, up above of the sub uh, sea surface? Do you recommend its uh, part, let's say, located along in the Red Sea, keep it or like uh, leave it or take it out? If there is a ship break has like a part of the uh, you know uh, above of the sea surface. Um, yeah, I would say to keep, to keep where they keep. are. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, it's uh, time's up. Uh, 
Now, uh, I would like uh, to thank you so much for this uh, interesting presentation. It was uh, like useful. Uh, also, I am I'm happy to participate in this uh, the first, you know, uh, lectures of uh, scientific uh, lectures that uh, the Commission Heritage uh, organized. Uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Uh, Keira, about this. Uh, hopefully, mm -hmm. we will work with, inshallah, it's a coming project work together uh, in the Red Sea or another place. Uh, thank you so much for attending. Uh, thank you. Also, thank, thank you, you very so much. much for your yeah, uh, thank you so much for uh, the audience with uh, so useful uh, questions. Uh, appreciating uh, that you attended. Uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Kea. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very and much. Sorry thank for the much. connection sometimes. No, it's okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.